This woman is infectious. She is contagious in such a good way. She and I just finished um, hosting two programs in person down in Florida. And we're so excited that she's here now with the Women's Forum. She is here with her book, A New Principles That Will Challenge Our Assum- Assumptions and really lead you to think about and maybe live from a new zone, which you're going to hear about, um, where you can ask for and get what you want. And that no, no is actually the starting point because she believes that if you are not making asks from this new zone you're going to learn about that threatens a no, you are prioritizing what is acceptable over what is possible. Friends, two words, buckle up. Dia, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Barbara and Nancy, and welcome everybody. I'm thrilled to be here. I wish we could be in a room, but we're not. We're in the world's room on the interwebs today. And yes, we're going to talk today about Ask Like an Auctioneer, my brand new book. But the ideas I'm going to share with you are not actually new. I started this as a little hunch of about five years ago and tested and iterated the ideas with live audiences just like you in workshops and keynotes until it got to the point where it was ready to turn into a book so we could scale these ideas. The goal of what I'm sharing today is to the book and all the other modalities available to get these ideas into the hands of women around the globe is to help a million women ask for more and get it. Um, Why? So we can put more money but also more decision-making power, those are related, in the hands of women everywhere so we can can change everything for all of us. Because, uh, you know, Nancy, you shared this last week when we were together with one another in Florida that, you know, money is power and there are lots of ways, you know, money and money adjacent to help put more decision-making power in your hands, whether it's about driving policy or policy Mm -hmm. change in your organizations, in your communities, or if it's about, you know, living in alignment with who you actually are in the household that you're in every day. Um, This is, I want you to be able to use asks asks as a success strategy to get you there. So thank you so much, um, Nancy. Yes, my name is Dia Bondi and we are going to talk about ask like an auctioneer. This slide is really about like, this is, you know, these are sharing fun ideas, but not necessarily financial advice. So you're going to find, seek out the professionals like um, Barbara and her team to, to help you make financial decisions out in the world. Um, So I am going to, let's see. So I'd like you to aim the ideas that I'm sharing with you today at something specific. So what is one concrete midterm goal that you have right now? And if that's something you'd like to keep to yourself, that's fine. But if it's something worth sharing because other women are going to learn from your goals, um, go ahead and put those in the chat right now. Maybe it's start a nonprofit that's close to a cause to your heart in the next 12 to uh, 12 to 18. 18 months. For me, it's going to be running leadership communications, two leadership communications programs as live retreats in the 2024 calendar. So let us know in the chat, what is one concrete midterm goal you have right now? Get that promotion, find, um, uh, increase your income by 20% by the end of the calendar year. I see working a calendar for next year together. Oh yeah, good. Getting a calendar for next year together. Anyone else want to share the key? The um, Get on a corporate board. Beautiful goal. Be more present. Ah, good. So if you were to put something that felt more concrete, how would you know that you were more present? Could it be uh, a way in a way in which you've successfully built something into your calendar by the end of the year? When you say physically stronger, I love that one. Um, but I want to be, I want you to be concrete. Does that mean I want to be able to squat cr- clean my own body weight overhead by end of 2024? What does more stronger mean? So the more specific, um, I love this one. Stacy says um, it's about getting speed speaking engagement. So great. Maybe you can put a number to that. We don't need to do that in the chat, but I'm offering you and inviting you to be really, really specific. A few years ago, we were giving the workshop for this. I was giving the workshop for this at at Dropbox. And I had a woman say, my goal, she was a in-house counsel there. She said, my goal is to keep learning and growing. And I'm like, that is not a goal. It's an activity. So what is, if you are learning and growing, what specific goal would that help you attain? So we want to keep that really concrete. So hold that in your mind because it's what I want you to be aiming the ideas that you learn today at throughout our program and beyond. Okay. So, um, and if something's not hitting you right now and it'll hit you um, and it hits you halfway through, great. Hold on to that. So my hope is that today you are going to get one idea, just one idea that gives you the courage and um, 
really the, the courage and confidence you need to ask for more when you go to make the ask that matter to that goal. I can't wait to hear what that one idea will be. Now, I've been a longtime leadership communications coach. I'll talk a little bit more about my work in a moment. Um, but in the 20 years helping VC-backed founders, senior leaders, mid-level managers speak powerfully, put together compelling stories that help advance and action the audiences that matter to what they're doing, I've come to the conclusion that we hate doing it and that we're mostly doing it wrong. And I didn't realize that until I started uh, fundraising auctioneering, but that asking is one of the most overlooked and uh, actively, sometimes actively avoided success strategies out there. And I want you to ask and ask big enough. You never leave any money and very importantly, opportunity on the table ever again. And I hope that what we share today will help you do that. So I am going to talk today a little bit about money, but understand that money is a metaphor. There are actually, in the hundreds of conversations I've had with women since I launched Project Ask Like an Auctioneer with the goal to help a million women ask for more four and a half years ago, um, I really understand that there are actually four categories of asking, um, strategic asking, which I go more deeply into the book, but understand that while I might be talking about money today, because that's what we do as auctioneers, we're selling something to someone for money, or we're asking for a direct pledge in which the only thing that they would get is a great feeling that they made a contribution <laughs> aligned to their actual values. So money is a metaphor, everyone. So if money is not the ask that you're making today, um, I want you to be thinking about what might you ask for. And I'm going to walk you through a little process to help you identify that a little bit later. I love all of these goals that are coming into the chat. Uh, you know, as they come to you, please place them. When you speak your goals to, into the world, you help other women see what's possible for them as well. So here's what we're going to do today. And we're going to go quick. You can tell I'm on a roll already. We're going to talk about how to ask like an auctioneer so you know what the hell does that mean? And then secondly, I'm going to share with you a framework. You, there's going to be a, you'll have a tool that you'll have access to, and I'm going to walk you through um, the first couple steps of it to build a rock solid ask plan, because I want you to be able to identify asks that aren't on the obvious menu of choices so that you can use asking as a success strategy. Okay, here we go. All right, everybody, um, give me a thumbs up in the in the chat so I know that you're here because this is an important, this is a really important um, idea I want to share with you that is like the stance that we're going to hold on to as we go to talk about asking for more and getting it, as we go to ask uh, for more. Thank you, Barbara, for your thumbs up. Nice to know you're here. Thank you, Nancy. Anybody else give me a thumbs up? It's a big deal for a speaker like me to see people alive in the chat because it, it sometimes it can be like shouting right into the wind. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Catherine. So what we're doing here is we're holding on to this stance, which is a phrase you've probably heard and seen on the internet. Um, and it goes like this. You will be too much for some people. Maybe some of you can finish the sentence for me. Those are not your people. Yes, you will be too much. Let me go back here. You will be too much for some people. Maybe it's in the size of your ask, but sometimes it's just in the size of ourselves, you know? I love this stance because it invites us to not think of the ways in which we might be misaligned with their audiences as an invitation to shrink or twist ourselves into a pretzel, but instead to recognize that what matters to us may not matter to them and that misalignment that we, there's misalignment that we don't have to internalize. So we're going to stay in this stance as we talk about asking for more and getting it. Nothing's wrong with you. It's just the situation ain't right. All right, let's keep going here. So who the hell am I? I'm Dia Bondi. I am a longtime leadership communications coach for 22 years. Maso Menos, I have been helping senior leaders in organizations and VC-backed founders who are usually series B and beyond. You know, they've, they've got product and teams and they're needing to figure out how to start using their voice to lead, not just managing and touching and building product themselves to lead and be successful. I helped Rio de Janeiro win the right to host the uh, 2016 Olympics. I worked on Turkey's bid. I've worked with countless uh, global leaders with the Clinton Global Initiative and other places sort of UN adjacent where we're addressing the world's grandest challenges around environment, sustainable um, resources, women and girls, health, um, and, and other items. And in my, I also do a lot of um, 
skills training where I'm not talking to necessarily leads of large organizations, but I have a room full of people who are high impact individual contributors and managers who understand they can use their voice to lead. And a handful of years ago, I started, um, I, I took a, a sabbatical. And in that time, I decided to do something I had threatened at a dinner table to. We were talking about bucket list stuff. My husband reminded me, hey, remember 10 years ago you said you'd do that thing? Well, now that you're looking for a funny adventure, maybe now's the time to do it. And he was right. And so I went to auctioneering school. And I started doing fundraising auctioneering when I got back to the San Francisco Bay Area for women-led nonprofits and nonprofits benefiting women and girls, because it's very aligned to what I care about in the world world, advancing and accelerating women. And about 20 auctions into it, all the while I'm doing my leadership communications work, about 20 auctions into it, I got hit over the head so hard and my two worlds came crashing together, communications and auctioneering. And I now saw how I had been helping my clients leave money and opportunity on the table without even realizing it, truly undermining the power of the potential of the asks that they were making. I'm going to show you what I saw. So my clients come to me when they need help speaking powerfully in front of really critical audiences. I don't care if it's seven people on your board, if it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a, you know, for a hundred million dollar raise, or if they are speaking to 150 votes to host an Olympic Games, or if they're looking for budget from their manager to build out a small team to advance a particular project at work. We're looking at ways you can use your voice to lead. And always we have to think about storytelling. What's the story I tell that moves the needle? And what is the needle we're moving? It's the action we're asking our audience to take, which is essentially a call to action. It is an ask. And so it's usually for things like you know, head count and budget, the opportunity to lead something important, et cetera, engagement. And once I get the what they're asking for, I'm like, yes, how much of the thing are you asking for? And this is when I don't get a very strong answer. What I very often get is a pile of hand wringing. And my audience, is, my clients, Barbara, you're smiling. I can't actually see you. My clients are, it's a powerful question for them. Well, I don't know. I Maybe I, I, I'm i not quite sure. Let me ask my best friend. Let me ask my mentor. Let me ask my dad, who basically has no idea what I do for a living. And I workshop it with myself until I come back with the question to me, which is, well, Dia, what do you think I can get? And for years, I was like, amazing question. What do you think I can get? It's like, oh, I need 100 grand for this project, but they'll never go for it. So I'm going to ask for 40. I'm going to do a, lot, a small test project. I'm going to nickel and dime the vendors that I use and see if I can push this thing over the line. I, they'll never go for 10 heads to build out this team. So I'm going to ask for six. I'm pretty sure they'll say yes to six. And I'm going to piece together some part-time from the engineering team with some discretionary spending I have to piece together a team with 1099s or independent contractors, contract work, and we'll see if we can get it done. What is this? Essentially, what we've done is we've gone out and we've asked in order to get a yes. And when we get that yes, we feel like a friggin' hero. We come back and we high-fived each other all day long. But I didn't see that this was a problem until I'd done 20 of those live fundraising auctionary, uh, auction events. Here's how I see it. So, and this is where you're going to want to look at the model. If you're looking away, if you're texting your husband about who fed the dog, um, this is the moment to actually take a look at the model that I'm sharing with you, which is also in the book, just so you know. Feel free to take screenshots of anything I'm sharing today if you want to have it and share it with your own communities. Uh, I'm, I, I'm open sourcing this today. So there is a relationship between an ask you make and the courage you need to make it, right? And I'm just, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to call it a one-to-one -one relationship. If I need to ask for one unit of something, I need to muster an equal amount of courage, 10 units, I need 10 units of courage. If I'm asking for one head to budget for to add one person to my team, I need, you know, that equal amount of courage for it. So these things kind of move together. And how do we define and decide how much courage? What what do, what contributes to how much courage we can muster? Well, what contributes to that amount is 
that guaranteed yes. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I can get 40 grand for this project. I'm pretty sure I can get two heads for, to add to my team. And if I'm pretty sure, I'm, I can muster enough courage to execute that ask. Great. And that way, our ask and the courage we need to make it is kind of being held hostage by the word yes. What about all of those increments that are are above that mostly guaranteed yes? You know, look, I know not everyone is the same. Some people need to be 100% sure they're going to get an instant yes. For some of us, it might be more like 85% or 92% or 97%. But nonetheless, we want to be pretty sure we're going to get that yes. What about all of those increments above? What about all the, those ones where you make that ask for something a little bigger and you just not totally sure what kind of answer you get. Why don't we go for those? We don't go for those because those all live in a place I like to think of as the zone of freaking out. Or if you don't like that, you can just use a little shorthand, which we call the Zofo. This is the place Nancy was talking about earlier in the day. If you're not in your comfort zone, where are you? You are in your Zofo. All of those increments that live above a mostly or fully guaranteed a, a yes live in the place that I like to call the zone of freaking out. And it is the zone of freaking out because we have no idea. It's that place you go when your best friend says, I know you've been writing, copywriting for $85 an hour your whole career, and it's time for you to raise your rates and come in at 125 and you get that feeling in your stomach. Like, what will my clients say? That is the zone of freaking out. Now, it is true that all the way at the top, the farthest regions of the, of the zone of freaking out, there is actually a no out there. No lie. There is a no. But if we can make asks that reach all the way up and tap touch that no and then negotiate down, that's the first time I've said negotiation. I don't talk about negotiation very much. But if we can have a conversation about what works for our audience at the biggest, farthest distance of the Zofo, we might land on a yes that is a little bit or considerably more than what we would have asked for if we'd gone for a guaranteed yes. Is everybody feeling me? Let me know in the chat if you're if you're clocking this idea here. Great. So look, if it is if you go for a no and it's ten percent, thank you, thank you everyone, thank you Stacy, thank you Catherine. If you are if you are, thank you Barbara. Yes, it is a reframe. This is the thing that hit me on the head. I was like, wait, what if instead of designing how we ask usually, what if we all did it like I do as, auction, as, as an auctioneer? What if all the women I work with and entrepreneurship and in-house professionals and solopreneurs didn't just ask like we usually do, we ask like an auctioneer. I like flipped the light on and, and wrote it down. And I was like, what does it mean to ask like an auctioneer? And this model is what you're seeing right now. Hit me like a ton of bricks. So we, I want you all to start asking like an auctioneer. Now, I understand you are not in a competitive bidding situation all the time. When you think of an act of an auctioneer, you think what of you think of like a competitive bidding that gets you to the highest number. I get it. You're not doing that. And if for some of you have had have been in a competitive bidding situation for let's say a job or you know something else you wanted a, a client a client really wanting to work with you, congratulations. It's a rare moment and uh, you are a rare species if that's happened for you. Most of the time though, we can even not in a competitive bidding situation we can ask ourselves not what do you think I can get, but we can aim for that no and right off the bat say, what do I think might threaten a no? And you will be surprised at how wrong you are. Let's go. Um, so we want, I want you to actually ask in order to elicit a no. And these are all going to be Zofo asks, everybody. Like the Zofo is real, but the Zofo is also where all the potential is. So I'd like to share with you a little, a little snippet of me doing a live auction. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Put it in the chat if you'd like to see that. This is this is me. I know you want to see it because it's a, I mean, it's, a, it's like a borderline train wreck, but I actually, yeah, right. People are like, please show me. Yes. Okay. I would like to show, set, set this up by saying, I am not a great auctioneer. I am a good enough auctioneer. And a good enough an auctioneer is a good enough auctioneer. Now, um, I'm showing you, this is a live auction I did a few years ago for a place in Berkeley called uh, the uh, Kala Art Institute. It's where we hosted our book launch party last week, which was wonderful. Um, and this is a lot like, 
lot is an auction item. Uh, we sell like lot, like nine out of 10 items. We sell at during the silent auction, like 140 pieces of art in the silent part, but we pull the best and most important ones off the wall and do these as a live auction. Now, here's what I'd like you to listen for. If you're on mobile, you'll still be able to um, if you're on mobile, you can even just uh, listen to it and you'll still have the answer. I want you to listen for what is it that I ask for? What do I end up selling it for? And notice what's going on in the room. Now, um, we've set the, the, the volume is set for this. You might have to turn the volume up a little bit as once I play this or turn it down a little bit if the voice is a little bit big. So here we go. Everybody look, everybody here I go. 42, jump into 46, 42, 46, 42, 46, 46, 45. Are you in at 45, sir? 42, 45, looking for 46, 46, looking for 47, 46, looking for 47 here. She's in at 46, looking $4,700 here. 47, looking for 48, 47, just looking for $4,800. 48, looking for 4,900, 49, looking for 5,000, 49, looking for 5,000. He's in at 49, he's got it at 40, 49, looking for $5,000 here. 49, looking for 5,000. He's in right now at $4,900. Are you in at five? Five, looking for 51. Five, looking for 51. Five, are you in at $5,100 here? She's got it at 5,000. Looking for 51. She's got it at $5,000. Looking for $5,100. Yes, who is she? Go ahead and look. $5,000. $5,100. Are you out, sir? $5,000. All in right now. Sold. $5,000. You've got it. You're bitter now. I told you I'm not a great auctioneer, but I'm a good enough auctioneer. Now in the chat, some that's really hard, by the way. I like, that is not easy. <laughs> so even being good enough is a lot. Okay, so everybody, thank you so much. Thanks so much. It is fun to watch. Yeah, it's fun to do when it's over. When I'm in it, I'm like, I feel like I'm running a, I'm running a sprint. So please tell me in the chat, what was the last number I asked for? What was the last number I asked for? Put it in the chat. 51, 51. Gail says 51. Candace says 51. Mary, Marilyn says 51. Yes, Nancy says 51. You got it. Okay, what did I sell it for? Tell me in the chat. What did I sell it for? Yes, yes. I had to get a no in order to sell it. I can't even sell it until I get a no. In this paradigm, in this mental model, no is not a bad word. It's a great word. It lets me know I have maximized the potential of an ask. I have maximized the potential of the ask. People say to me all the time, oh yeah, D, I get it. Ask like an auctioneer. Because what's the worst thing they could say? No. I'm like, hell no best thing they could say is no, because that lets you know you've maximized the potential of that ask. And I use, I eat my own dog food. I use this in my own practice and my own business. I'm writing proposals constantly for keynotes, for workshops, for private coaching, for bespoke engagements, for special strategic projects, all live long day. Great. I can't sell it. That's right, Dana. I hope I said your name right. That's right. I can't sell it until I get a no. I'm, I'm just going to share quickly last, um, how am I doing on time? I'm rocking and rolling on time. So uh, last year, uh, we put together a proposal to do a very like sort of custom long-term coaching engagement with a startup founder who's a complete badass and who I had built a lot of rapport with during our discovery sessions. And when it was time for us to write a proposal, the woman who helps me in my business, um, Jamie Lynn said, is that a Zofo number, Dia? Or are you lowballing? I said, all right, fine. And we workshopped together what the Zofo number was, which was super Zofo-ish for me. And we were like, I was convinced I was going to send it off and he was going to come back immediately and say, no way, like I can't do that. But that I had built enough relationship and rapport, enough trust and alignment that I also could trust that he would want to have a conversation with me about what, what, what would work for the both of us. I sent it off and literally in 24 hours, he said, yeah, great. Send me the proposal. And we were pissed. We knew we'd left something on the table because we got a quick yes. Obviously pissed in the most wonderful way because the, 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 the yes that we got was actually way more than the yes we would have gotten if we had just headed for the yes. We thought he would have said yes to. So this is what I mean by we are so often wrong. All right, so let's keep rocking and rolling here. Um, oops, sorry, 42. I gotta go to the next slide. Jump into 42, oops. jump sorry, into guys. 46. This is the tricky part with this. So, okay, if all of the asks that we make that sort of challenge our notion of what's possible, if you're going to ask like an auctioneer, those are going to be Zofo asks. 
So what we have to do is think like, okay, if I'm going to make the kinds of asks that freak me out, and this isn't for all asks you'll make, not every ask in your professional life is going to be a Zofo ask, but there are critical moments where you might want to go, hmm, is this one of those moments where I can use this ask to really challenge what I think is possible and level up big time? Maybe. But if we're going to do that, we've got to empower the ask. Now, notice how I don't say empower you. You are already empowered. This is like, imagine your ask is like your little cousin or your little nephew, and you just want to give it a pep talk so it can go ahead and do the scary thing. I'm going to share with you now um, four of the nine ideas I share in the book, Ask Like an Auctioneer, um, and which is, would be on an audiobook as well, by the way. Um, four of the nine ideas I share in the book to help you get into your Zofo. Little, there are ideas, I, that I did not learn these at auctioneering school. There are ideas that I learned doing auctioneering and that I leverage myself when I'm standing in front of the room going, oh no, I got to make one more ask to this room and I feel kind of Zofo-ish. What do, how do I use one of these ideas to help me just go ahead and do it? Bias toward action, Nancy said. I hope one of these ideas feels resonant enough for you to help you get into your Zofo and get out of your head. Here's the first idea. People are irrational. And if you don't like this, you can think of it like this. Your rationale for what they, what you'd say yes or no to is not their rationale for what they might say yes or no to. So stop deciding for other people, okay? Um, oh, let me go back because I want to say one more thing before I get into number two. Go back. Um, look, last year, two years ago, Nancy, I shared this story when we were in Florida, uh, a year and a half ago, actually, I did a live auction and I sold a one night camping trip for a, the buyer and 11 of their friends for $55,000. Not at all what I thought somebody would pay. You know why? Because it's none of my friggin' business. Their rationale is not my rationale. I'm just going to get out of my head, get into my Zofo and ask and find out, period. Period. Okay. Um, so let's go to idea number two. Oops, here we go. Idea number two is you, if you're going to make a Zofo ask heading on into it, you need to decide before you go to make it what your reserve is. Your reserve is the minimum you'll take in your counter offer. Why is this important? This is important because if you know ahead of time where your boundaries are, you're not slipping and sliding all over the place when you go in to make that ask. You're standing on more solid ground and you can make a plan about what happens when you get a no even to the minimum amount you've decided ahead of time. It will give you so much freedom and power when you decide now what you will say yes or no to. Every time I do a live auction, you know, at Kala Art Institute, I'll do this next year's, we look, before we do the live auction, we look at all the items we're gonna sell and we decide what our minimum bid is on each of those. Uh, we'll sell that piece of art for $5, but that piece, unless we get $1,800, we are not selling it. This one has to meet $5,000 or we're not gonna do it. Doesn't mean the bidding starts there, but we know, we know, I know going into that where my boundary is so that when I don't meet it, I got a plan about what's next. I get to decide. And I have techniques I use to move on past that, um, that situation where they don't meet the reserve. And this is important because I get this question from you all all the time. Well, great, Dia, I've got a minimum. Okay, I want a, I want a 17% raise, you know, plus a bonus package. My minimum would be, I would, I would stay if they gave me 12. Great. But what if they can't even meet 12? The question I get is, what do I do if they won't even meet the 12%? And I'm like, I don't friggin' know. What do you want to do? And you decide that. The no, the hard no you get is not a cul-de-sac for your life and career. It is a speed bump on the way to wherever you're going because you're going to know ahead of time. If I don't get this book deal, here's what I'm going to do. If I don't get this raise at the minimal that I, minimum I'll tolerate, here's my plan. Okay. So great question. What if they don't meet your reserve? A, you got to know what it is. B, what do you want to do? And sometimes the answer, sometimes the answer to what do you want to do will come with some tears and that's okay. Here we go. Idea number three. Price, this is my favorite one. Price is a measure of value, not worth. Every time I go to do a live auction, my client will say, we want this vase to sell for $5,000. And I'm like, I'm going to sell it for whatever, A, I'm going to sell it for whatever anybody in the room values it at. 
period. And if they don't value it the same way you value it, meaning if they don't meet our reserve, we don't sell it. Now, this is a really important idea because in the world right now, in our zeitgeist, we talk all the time about getting paid what you're worth, you know, earning what you're worth, having the job that you're worth. And I want you to do all that. The problem is when we conflate the answers that we get to the asks that we make with our own sense of worth and worthiness, it begs us to shrink that thing Shrink, shrink that ask enough till we can guarantee a yes because a no is just too damn painful. So I want to flip the script for you a little bit and understand it's like this. Price or what they'll pay or do is a way to see or measure what they value, what they value and how they value it. Not a way to measure or define your worth or worthiness because that is infinite. I don't even talk about asking or getting what you deserve, because if we all asked for and got what we deserved, the world would look really different. Really different. You are deserving of any ask you might make, whether people say yes to it or no to it is based on what they value and how they value it, not your worth and worthiness. I love this idea because it reminds me that when I put that Zofo number on a proposal and I send it off and I get that no, or they can't meet my reserve, that is not about my worth and worthiness. It's about what they value. And I want to know what they value because I want to look for that alignment or misalignment because I will be too much for some people. Those are not my people. Idea number four. Um, can I get like a yes? Okay, bye, Julie. She had to log off. Bye, Julie. You can, you can watch the re the replay. So purpose drives courage. This idea that purpose is, is important for mustering courage is proven out over and over again in my leadership communications work. When my leaders that I work with uh, get really clear and remind themselves of the purpose that this courageous communications moment serves, they're more likely to pick the right story to tell to speak the truth that feels uncomfortable and to find the courage to do the thing that has the higher impact. Because the question isn't, how do I have more impact? The question is, how do you tolerate the impact, the power that you actually do have in the room? Now, the idea from auctioneering that's helpful is, okay, if you know what your purpose is, if you know that your ask is serving the purpose of making it possible for you to put your kids through college, for you to actually retire at a certain age, for you to buy your very first house, for your ability to secure your very first solo apartment and not li live with housemates anymore so that you can launch your own private media company as a side hustle, which will then fund your global travel in the next 15 years. Got it? Purpose, if we can understand the purpose that our ask is serving and then be an agent for that purpose, being an agent as an auctioneer is what we do. We're not, we're neither the buyer nor the seller. We're an agent for the seller. And that gives me just enough distance to speak powerfully about the purpose that the organization I'm there to represent is, uh, is, is gunning for in our fundraising. And you too can be an agent for the purpose of the asks that you're making. And if you think of yourself as an agent for the ask, maybe that gives you just enough distance to be able to advocate for that ask in a way that if it was too close, he feels harder. I hope this is one idea that helped you get you into your own Zofo. Quickly, I'm going to share, I know we're getting close on time. I want to share um, a story about my friend, Jane. I call her Jane the champion. And this is an interesting, this is an interesting um, story about, well, I'll tell you what it's about once I'm done, or you can, th you can think about what it's about for you. Jane the champion is a friend of mine who started a nonprofit aimed at bringing world-class coaching at a low bono rate to, um, to women, women, uh, high impact women founders and women leaders who are doing work with positive social impact. Okay. She was a chief of staff at a very large, uh, uh, company, a tech company here in the Bay area. And she called me cause she knows I do all my communications work. She's like, Hey, I have my first pitch coming up for sponsors for the coaching program because we're going to try to use sponsorship model to try to make the nonprofit sustainable because it kind of caught wildfire without her knowing it. She thought it was just going to be a little side thing because I want to leave my full-time regular day job and go all in on this coaching program that I put together. It, it was set up actually as a nonprofit. Okay. Cause it has positive social impact and social outcomes. And I was like, great, what are you doing? She's like, I'm going to go, we're going to try out this, this, uh, sponsorship model on my first big push. And I'm feeling, you know, like I want to, I want to do basically a, a pitch check with you. So we got on a call, we looked through her deck. And I was like, beautiful. It's a beautiful 
the story is clear. You're compelling, Jane. What's, you know, what are you asking for? And she said, well, what do you think I can get? And I was like, wrong question. <laughs> what, you know, and we came up with a number. She gave me a number. It was like 20 grand a cohort or something. And I was like, really? Uh, uh, like, is that, is that's what's going to make it possible for you to leave your chief of staff check, you know, chief of staff, like tech job. And she, she was like, all right, all right, fine. She's like, it's more like 36. I was like, okay, now we're talking per cohort. Excellent. 36. And she said, oh God, I just feel so weird to say that out loud. I was like, why? She said, you know, it's weird. I feel so comfortable negotiating and advocating for, you know, big projects and contracts on behalf of my employer. But boy, when I go ask for myself, I get real spun up. And I was like, yeah, welcome to the Zofo. And also let's, let's go back and let's talk a little while about the purpose of your nonprofit. And so I let her tell me some beautiful stories about the kind of impact that women were making in the world and that her organization was helping to accelerate. We sort of mustered, you know, the must it mustered up the, the, um, the faces of the women that she's already had an impact with and got reconnected with the purpose of her coaching, her coaching nonprofit. And she was kind of lighter at that moment. And I was like, okay, now Jane, now that you know what that is, Leslie, you've reminded yourself, what if you just acted as an agent for that purpose? She was like, I can do that. So she got herself into her Zofo and she went and made the ask. I hadn't heard from her. So I called her a week later. I was like, how did it go? She said, they said, no. And I was like, yeah, but did you step into your Zofo? She's like, absolutely. But they said, no. I said, how much do you ask for? She said, 40 grand. And I was like, well, that's another four grand or six grand above what we talked about. Well, did they negotiate down? And she said, absolutely not. They had to say no at 40. They had to say no at 35. They had to say no at 20. They had to say no at 15. Why? Because our ask force them to recognize that they didn't actually, as an organization, have a social impact giving strategy. If, I, if we had gone in and asked for 99 cents, they would have been like, oh, shit. Like, this is, we, we, need, we need to actually have a policy around this. Like, what are we doing in this world? So she said, well, what happened, though, for us is that other things happened when we made that ask. We understand now that we were curating the wrong audience, that we weren't qualifying our leads, so to speak, as we think about the asks that we're making. I had a woman, she invited me on her podcast last month. She was in my first workshop I ever gave at Dropbox. I gave a few at Dropbox, but the first workshop ever. And she used this stuff to like, I mean, she's like, 10x her life with it, which is just so wonderful. I mean, it was like four years ago she was in there. She said one of the most powerful things was like, I really realized that I needed to do a better job of asking the right people when I go to make the, the Zofo ask. And it materially changed the trajectory of her career. So no is okay, even when it's a hard no, because it helps us root find who the right people are. It produces all kinds of ancillary results that help us use asking more strategically and more successfully. Um, I'm, I also have the story of Lorena, the brave, which I'm going to skip right past, but basically she was in my class. Um, the first time I test road tested these ideas and she texted, uh, she didn't text me. She tweeted at me. She didn't even introduce herself the day later. She tweeted at me this. And she said, uh, I just asked like an auctioneer and I feel like I'm going to puke, but she knew that I knew what she really meant was I just asked like an auctioneer and I feel like I'm doing something courageous. I'm standing up for my dreams for myself and I'm asking for more so I can reach my goals faster. She's a single Latina mom in technology starting out as a um, recruiting coordinator at a big tech firm. She's now, um, she tripled her salary and now um, head of people operations and recruiting for an augmented reality company into a mid-size augmented reality company. And this is what I mean by change everything for all of us. Now we've got a Latina single mom in charge of recruiting in a gaming space that is traditionally hostile towards women. Let's go. All she has to do is be herself, walk the world with her lens, and she's going to make her space more inclusive. So the zone of freaking out, again, is where all the zone, where all the potential truly is. So the question might be, and Nancy, can you find that um, link to the ask plan I sent you earlier this morning? She's going to drop it in the chat. The question then becomes, what is your next strategic ask? 
And we have a tool for that. Nancy's going to drop it in the chat. You can always find it at my website, ask, um, excuse me, at my website, diabondi.com. There's lots of other resources there. And at the, at the um, thank you, she's just dropped it right there. It's a free download you can grab. When the Ask Like an Auctioneer website refreshes on published day, which is the 14th, you will have all the frameworks in the book as free downloads as, as well, along with some bonus content. If you buy the book today or any other time, you can get a bunch of bonus content that will go uh, get you into these ideas and a little deeper into them as um, uh, in self-serve content. You'll also be enrolled in something called the Zofo Challenge, which is an eight-day challenge to help you design and, uh, and execute a strategic ask for yourself in your career or in your business. So what is your strategic ask? Go ahead and click on this and find the download for yourself. If you're on mobile, don't worry. You can just listen. I'm just going to go through uh, the first four ideas here. Um, so we've figured out how to ask like an auctioneer. Now, how do you build a rock solid, powerful ask plan? You're going to, you've got the download here. Here's what it looks like. It's six steps. It's super simple. And I'm going to show you, I'm just going to bring voice to the first four steps a little bit. Number one starts with where we started this morning, which was, um, or at the beginning of this call, which is what is one concrete midterm goal that you have right now? And it's not the, I just want to keep learning and growing type. It's literally like, I want my boss. I, I want to be a certified agile coach. I don't know if there's any technologists in the room, but agile is a uh, project management methodology that is ubiquitous in tech. And when you're agile certified, you're kind of a baller. So maybe in the next 12 to 18 months, you want to be, uh, you want to be agile certified and you don't want to pay for it yourself. There you go. That's a nice solid goal. Now, the next question then becomes not what do I ask for to get that goal? It becomes this question. What is the next move I need to make that gets me closer to that goal? Maybe one of the big moves for getting Agile certified is secure funding that is not coming out of my checkbook. I don't know where that's going to come from. Your boss is going to pay for it. You apply for, you know, you find a scholarship, your mentors are going to do it. You're going to crowdsource that money. I don't know how you're going to do that, but secure funding is one big move you're going to need to make. Another one is going to be, you know, around actually finding the time to do it and execute it. And then maybe another big move is to find champions in your organization who are along for the ride with you, that when you are Agile certi certified, they're going to propel you in the right direction to help you build out a career using that methodology. Those are three moves you could make. Once you've got that identified, now we go on to the next step, which is what might I ask for that helps action my move that gets me closer to my goal? What might I ask for? that helps me action the move that gets me closer to that goal. Recognizing completely that you might not know who you're going to make that ask of yet. That's okay. You can root around and find out. You might realize, oh, I need somebody who is a, like you might have like a, a social profile of someone, right? A psychographic of someone you're going to find in your network who that person is that you might make that big ask for, ask to. Now, step four, there's six steps. This is the last one I'm going to share with you today. Take that ask and Zofo it. If you were to make that ask so big that it freaked you out, how would you do that? Sometimes it's like, really si simply, I want to ask for a 10% raise so I can fund, you know, I can fund a uh, down payment on my first house. Maybe it now becomes a 20% raise with a, with a, with a uh, uh, reserve of 12%. Maybe in my case, I shared this example earlier, Nancy, uh, when Nancy and I were together in a room, uh, you know, I know that I want to run two Leaders Voice um, retreats in my business this next year. I need to populate them with portfolio companies of VCs around the world. I like to go to market with partners with, with like ecosystem partners. My friend Jim Cook, he was a co-founder at Netflix. I could ask him to introduce me to people who run um, portfolio platform for uh, VCs in the Valley. Or I could Zofo it by saying, hey, Jim, I know you host a monthly roundtable. Could you invite me to be a featured guest so that the 25 people in that roundtable who come to your sessions get to know and like and trust me beyond just a simple introduction so that my relationship is, uh, my trust penetrates um, more in that hour than I would if I had just had a simple email introduction. That feels, I, I know I can Zofoify it myself even further. It's like, what else? What else? What else, Dia? What else might I do? 
So my challenge to you is to take an ask that you'll make in this case, an action's a move that gets you closer to your goal and Zofo it up the wazoo. And um, you can find the other two steps for completing this in the download that I shared. Now, I, I love this quote because I think it's relevant here that, you know, Brene Brown says that, you know, only when we are brave enough to explore the darkness will we truly discover the infinite power of our light. And I think of this as when we're willing to make asks that feel like you're kind of feeling your way through the dark, you're not sure what kind of answer you get, you'll be surprised at how powerful that ask can be to accelerate you toward what matters to you. So yes, you will be too much for some people. Those are not your people. Here's what you can do if you're interested. Nancy can put the put the notes. Um, um, thank you so much uh, for coming. Uh, for those of you who are dropping by and for those of you who are staying, we're gonna go into breakouts in a second. Please, please, please share the ideas that I've that I've shared with you here today. You know, the idea of the Zofo is something that you can draw on a napkin with your best friend at girls' night next week and have an impact in your own community. If you are inclined, please go to the Amazon link that that um, Nancy has dropped right now. The book is available in stores on November 14th. And yes, I'm selling this book to you right now because the way we can actually spread this is through your voice, not through mine. 